Well, I, I applaud the uh, uh, South Tampa Chamber for um, trying to recreate uh, some personal connection during this absolutely crazy time. It is uh, certainly something that we're working with many of our clients on. Um, how do you recreate uh, that um, connection that you typically get, whether it's in your office environment or at networking events like the chamber puts on or um, just lunch or coffee meetings. And it's it's very difficult right now. And I, I applaud uh, everyone who is trying to uh, come up with unique ways to communicate um, in this uh, unique em environment. What I'd like to talk about today um, and I plan on uh, maybe uh, 10 minutes of, of, of remarks, um, but I tend to work better in an interactive setting where um, we get into questions and answers and, and uh, hear what's really on your mind. But I'll give you a, a kind of an overview of, of the things that we're working on as we advise our clients during, during this matter. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, and I see a lot of friendly faces um, uh, out there uh, on the interwebs right now, um, uh, but for those who don't know, Tucker Hall, uh, we're a public relations, public affairs firm uh, here, based here in Tampa. Uh, this is our 30th year in business. Um, our primary focus is complex communications challenges. So whether that's a strategic initiative that a company is taking on, um, an issue or public affairs matter that they need to manage or a crisis matter. And so uh, we're here today to talk a little bit about uh, communications and management during a crisis um, uh, such as COVID-13. So a couple of, couple of high level things and then um, uh, maybe dig into the weeds a little bit and then, then answer any questions and, and look forward to the conversations because I think um, what I've found is, uh, especially with our clients and our friends, um, some of the things you come up with are great, very creative, very innovative, and I'd love to hear um, maybe from all of you what, um, what you're doing. So uh, in terms of, of crisis management and crisis communications, there are really two things um, that organizations need to focus on. Uh, number one, what is your message and what are you going to say? And, um, uh, and, and then under, developing those messages and developing a rhythm and a pattern for distributing them. And it usually starts uh, with the internal audiences first. So your employees are typically at the top of that communications pyramid because your employees can be your best advocates. They can be the ones that are out there talking to others in the community about your response to this crisis, what you are doing, how you are adapting, how you are continuing to help your clients, how you're innovating. So really think about your employees as uh, an opportunity to, to deputize them, to, to give them the opportunity to go out and, and speak the company line um, uh, to, to different audience groups. But then you should think about that communication in concentric circles. So you've got your employees in the middle, uh, and then who's the next circle outside of that? Typically, it's um, uh, maybe uh, key partners or key vendors um, that uh, help you um, do your client work. And, and just keep thinking about it outward and just make sure you're communicating uh, to those um, different audience groups uh, in a frequent way. Now, I will say that um, every organization out there right now is um, communicating about their response to COVID-19. And I understand the need that organizations feel that they should do that. Um, but I will be candid with you. I've gotten, and I'm sure you've gotten some of these too, where you get a message uh, from an auto insurance company and they're saying that they're concerned about your health and safety. Well, I only hear from my auto insurance company twice a year, and that's when I'm supposed to pay my bill. So I know they're not really concerned about my health and safety. Um, I get uh, their, their, their desire to feel like they need to respond, but you just need to think about all of your communication in the context of what does that client, what does that customer want to hear from, from me? Um, uh, you know, a more relevant example would be, uh, and we were talking earlier about Takeout Tuesday, is restaurants. I do want to hear from restaurants. What are you doing? What specials do you have? How are you delivering meals? How are you ensuring that the food that I uh, consume from your uh, from your businesses is safe? So I think 
think through again your role in this COVID nineteen crisis and and communicate appropriately. So that's that's one. Think about your communication, your role, who you communicate with, when, how, uh, and then also have consistency there. Uh, the second big thing is to what is to develop the process that your company has for making decisions in a crisis. So many organizations, large organizations, uh, during a crisis will stand up what's called the incident command system. And uh, many of you are familiar with it if you uh, uh, worked in federal government or a large organization that uh, hand handles uh, hazardous materials or in a hospital or anything like that. But the incident command system, very simply put, is a structure recommended by the federal government um, to uh, help organizations make good decisions with all the key players around the table. Now, small businesses um, don't typically have an incident command structure, uh, nor should they. It's, it probably uh, would be wasted time and effort, but how can you recreate it so that you can have the right people around the table to make an appropriate decision? So for example, in the incident command structure, you have the incident commander at the top. So you've got one person who is in charge. So in your organization, who is that? It's the owner or the CEO is usually gonna be your incident commander. Uh, then down out of that, they've got finance. So your CFO or whoever makes sure that the money's coming in and going out appropriately. Logistics. So how do you make things happen in your business? Who's in charge of that? Maybe a chief operating officer uh, or operations is the other um, uh, key piece of the incident command structure. So again, how do you get products, goods, services from point A to uh, point B? And then planning. Who is kind of stepping outside of the craziness of the moment to think about what does next week look like? What does the next two weeks look like? What does next month look like? What does next quarter look like? And those are the, those are the general roles um, for the incident command uh, structure. A couple of other things. Um, one, I think it's really important for organizations to understand when, you know, typically when we, not typically, but often when we're advising clients in a crisis, it's because somebody at the company has made a mistake or done something bad. Um, it's really important, I think, to remember in this crisis, you haven't done anything wrong. You uh, and all of us are victims of this in many ways. Um, now, if um, it, it's discovered that your organization didn't follow proper protocol and um, you had, an, as, as I'm sure some of you heard, there was a COVID-19 party in Kentucky where all these people got together and had a party and lo and behold, They've all now tested positive for COVID-19. If you do something like that, then yes, this is a crisis of your making. But generally speaking, uh, the coronavirus crisis is an external crisis. So you haven't done anything wrong. And, and oftentimes that frees up organizations to think creatively. And I would just really encourage you to, um, to look at it um, uh, from that uh, perspective. The other uh, thing that I think we've all learned uh, over over the last couple of weeks is this is a slow moving crisis. Um, you know, think about your business two weeks ago and what you were doing and think about where you are today and could you imagine that you're in this position right now? Probably not. So, um, and then even though it is slow moving, there seem to be fast moving developments in terms of this shutdown, this airline ban, this country doing this, these borders being shut, uh, Wall Street taking a dive, all those kinds of things. So there are fast developments that can really um, pull you in a bunch of different directions. Um, but keep in mind, this is, this is the marathon. This is not the sprint. So pace yourself. Uh, be forgiving of yourself if your company or organization makes a mistake. That's okay. Just own it and then clean it up and then move on. Um, you're gonna have to learn and adapt as I'm sure all of you have um, uh, so far. Obviously, this is, this is not, um, not business as, as normal. So let me just touch on a couple of communications items real quick and then um, uh, maybe open it up for questions, comments, and, and again, your insights uh, as well. Um, 
So back to the communications piece, you want to communicate regularly with your key stakeholders. So your employees, your customers, your business partners, vendors, government regulators, if you're, you're in a, an organization or a company that, that has some kind of oversight. Um, and, and really, they want to know what specific steps are you taking um, to battle this, this crisis. And, and if you're not communicating, um, that absence creates doubt. Um, now, as, as I alluded to at the top, I don't need to hear from every organization that's ever gotten my email ever about what they're doing about COVID-19. Um, however, if I'm your employee, I really want to know, what are we doing? Um, I'm reading the news too. I'm seeing businesses fail. How are we doing? And, and I think that, um, you know, the best path uh, on this is a regular communication with your employees so that um, they understand that they're going to hear from you at a time certain every day or every week or twice a day, whatever the rhythm is that you think is appropriate. And, and that communication should really avoid cliches and platitudes. You don't want to just send out these bromides that make your your employees feel good, you need to be uh, straightforward with them and offer them straight talk about what is really going on uh, with your company. You want to establish credibility and you're an honest broker of, of good information. Um, the other thing is we don't really know where this is going to go. A range of outcomes are possible. So you should take a little bit of time and plan for uh, kind of the good, better, best, um, or worst case, best case uh, scenario. Um, and, and don't speculate, um, but, but think through, um, you know, what those certain scenarios um, would be. Um, I think on the communications front, um, the other big thing is just watch for the rumors, um, you know, whether it's the internal rumor mill in your company, um, or external rumor, rumor mills. It's, it's um, fascinating to me that we are in an era of information and I find it extremely difficult to um, find and consume quality information that I can trust. And just as a quick small piece of background on me, Prior to joining Tucker Hall 11 years ago, uh, my background was in the news business and I ran news departments all around the country. And so my last stop was managing the news department uh, at WTSP in St. Pete. And uh, so I think I know a little bit about how this all works, um, but uh, it is very hard to find quality information. And so I think you do need to go to your trusted sources of, of news and information. Um, you can go directly to the source, so the Centers for Disease Control, um, other, other outlets like that. The state uh, Florida Department of Health, I think, has some good information. Um, and if you're a large enough organization, um, you could potentially deputize somebody on your team to prepare materials uh, from all these different sources, um, kind of collating uh, the material and having some kind of communication to your team that says, here's what's happening um, uh, that is relevant to our particular industry. And if you don't have anybody who can do that, you know, maybe it's a 10 or 15, a good investment of 10 or 15 minutes of, of your time. Um, let me just talk a little bit about business considerations real quick, and, and I'm sure these are questions you have asked and answered um, in your company, or at least you're pondering uh, over. Um, so you, you want to make sure that you're as ready and as resilient as you can. This is, uh, again, a crisis that I don't think any of us could have predicted uh, uh, six months, six weeks ago, eight weeks ago, but it's here. So obviously what are the impacts on your business and what are those indicators that you're going to use to measure them so obviously sales or revenue um, those are those are some indicators but what else what else is out there that you need to make sure you're paying attention to um, what alert system do you have in place to make sure that you're aware of um, uh, important developments local regional, national, worldwide, and then how do you take those into consideration? Um, uh, you know, if you have your, your makeshift incident command team, you should probably re 
meet at a time certain uh, during this crisis. And it doesn't have to be long. Um, uh, you know, it can be a 10 minute uh, Zoom uh, conversation uh, at the beginning of each day and maybe at the end of each day. Um, and then again, you'll find your rhythm on this as, 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 as this goes on. Um, your business continuity program, uh, uh, program. I think uh, all of us have, have um, uh, learned a lot about how ready we are for a major disruption. Um, so make sure that as you go through this crisis that you capture the learnings that you've had right now so that the next time something happens, hopefully it'd never be this bad, but a hurricane, there's gonna be a lot of relevant information that you could use uh, for a hurricane for remote work or securing your, your, your facility while nobody is, is in it. Um, reach out to those vendors and those partners that you rely on critically for your business. So if it is a supplier that you have to be in contact with, because if you don't get product X from them, you can't deliver product Y to your clients. So make sure you understand what they're doing because their problem becomes your problem. Uh, and not just from a business perspective, but also a communications perspective. So back to the restaurant business, if your um, a food supplier, uh, you know, has a positive test for COVID-19 and your customers know, hey, you get product from them. What are you doing about this? How are you keeping me safe? So their problem becomes your problem. So their risk is, is really your risk. So be thinking about that and, and understand what their plans and contingency plans are. Um, what are you doing if there's an outbreak among your employees? Um, you know, some of you are sole practitioners, so uh, what happens if it's you? Um, but if you've got an employee who, who tests positive, what are you gonna do? What do you need to say to your, your customers? Um, you know, as, as you work through, I assume most everybody right now is working from home. Um, if not, um, how, um, uh, you know, how are you going to make a determination if you reach, reach that point? Um, maybe the, 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 the county government or the city government is going to make that determination for you um, uh, by a stay-at-home order or a work-at-home order, but um, just make sure you're thinking about that. Um, and if you do still have uh, employees on site, how are you protecting